this time now we are joined by Mike Richmond, beat writer for the Oregonian slash Oregon Live, covering these Blazers. And Mike, we've heard a lot of talk about the small forward rotation and position. What have been your thoughts about the Lillard, CJ, Harkless, Aminu, Plumley lineup so far we've seen this preseason? Well, it was the Blazers' best lineup last year, and so far this preseason looks like their best lineup again. Um, the, the three, there's not a ton of separation between Harkless, Crab, and, and Turner just yet. I think Harkless is the best perimeter defender they have on the team, so getting him out there with the starting group helps. And I think his skill set fits better probably playing with the two guards, whereas Crab and Turner probably can survive a little better playing off the bench with one another. There's a lot of continuity on this year's roster. In fact, I, I think I read somewhere the Blazers will return the highest percentage of minutes played last season with this year's roster than any other team in the NBA. How do you think this roster continuity can help this team this year? Well, they're just a little bit further ahead from where they uh, where they would be if they have to install a lot of different things. Uh, you know, they return 11 guys, but basically they return everybody but Evan Turner who played last year. You know, they lose... Gerald Henderson from the regular rotation and replace him with Turner. They'll be a little further along on offense. Um, it's, it's hard to get too far ahead defensively during the preseason, but I think just in terms of Terry Stats, who has a giant playbook, the Blazers are probably a little further along in that giant playbook than they would be if they had to integrate some new guys. It's hard to tell a ton from some of the teams in the preseason, but as you look at some of the other Western Conference teams and some of the big changes on teams like Oklahoma City and Minnesota, obviously adding a little bit more firepower there, has there been any team that you've seen this preseason that has really seemed to look like they're going to maybe make that turn this year and really step their game up another level? Um, you know, I was everyone's been hot on the Jazz, um, and then that, and then taking that big leap and winning the Northwest, and maybe even. Uh, getting home court advantage in the first round of the playoffs. I was impressed when I saw them. I thought Gordon Hayward looked fantastic, and then he got injured about a week later. So they were probably the most impressive team, but they've been dealing with health issues for the you know, second year in a row, so it's, that'll be troubling for them. Gordon Haywood out six to eight weeks with the broken bone in his hand. Not a great way to start the season, unfortunately. Looking at this Blazers roster, when you've got so many different ball handlers, we've seen some good stuff from Shabazz Napier this preseason. How valuable is it for teams to have that third, almost fourth option at point guard when you talk about depth in an 82-game season? Well, I see Shabazz Napier as the fourth option at point guard. I know that fans have really fell in love with my man in the preseason, and he's played really well. He's been really excited. But I... I... Damian Lillard is the starter, obviously. DJ McCollum is the backup point guard. I, I think people are confused about what's kind of going on. It, nothing has changed. He's still the backup point guard like he was last year. They signed Evan Turner to be another ball handler. can't figure out sort of where Shabazz Napier fits in the rotation if that's the way they're going to go. I see him as point guard number four. But the way it helps is just different guys can initiate. It lets Dame and CJ play off the ball more sort of take some pressure off them early in the offense and make it harder for defenses to key on the Blazers' two best players sort of right away coming across midcourt. What were your thoughts on the way Portland was able to space the floor and just the harmony that it seemed the offense was in in that first quarter against Denver? I know Michael and I, when we were watching the game, we're thinking, this is looking pretty good, and we know this is preseason, but my goodness, these guys are looking sharp right now. Yeah, that was, that was the Terry Stotts dream, wasn't it? Uh, first seven baskets were assisted, and they had, I think, five of their first seven shots were threes. Um, you know, Al Farouk has that weird catapult launch, but he's an above-average three-point shooter. He shot 36% on 350 attempts last year. He's fine, if not even good, three-point shooter, despite what it might look like when he lets it go. If Mo Harkless continues to shoot the way he has in preseason, the Blazers have a ton of shooters on that, uh, on that starting lineup. And obviously, Danny and CJ are fantastic from deep. And when you have a passing like Mason in the middle, particularly with that starting group, you can spread people out and do a lot of different things. You know, Mike, with perimeter skills being at such a premium in today's NBA and the Blazers and most teams playing uh, open post type of basketball, where do you think the Trailblazers are going to get the lion's share of their points in the paint this year? Uh, the little guys driving to the rim. I, I think they posted up the fewest times of any team in NBA history last year. 
They didn't exactly add a low post threat in the offseason. Evan Turner actually can post up a little bit, but I don't think that's going to be a big chunk of their offense. I think the way they score in the paint is spreading people out and letting guys like Dane and CJ and maybe Alan Crabb, if, uh, if this bit of dribbling improvement he's, he's shown in the preseason continues, those guys get to the rim and score. Speaking about Evan Turner, many people talked about just his versatility and his skills. Do you see him then finding most of his scoring in kind of the mid-range jumpers? And we saw against Denver the ability to get smaller guards on his hip and then take him to the hoop. Where do you think he's going to really chip in most of his scoring? You know, he's a really good post-up scorer, but like I said, I just don't see him. He used to run it about two seasons ago where they they put Wesley Matthews in the post intentionally, you know, run a screen for him to get a smaller guy in the post and let him go to work. I don't see the Blazers doing that super often, so I do think you're going to see a lot of Evan uh you know, him dribbling into his own shot in the mid-range. And he also might score a little bit more on the break, because he's, he's pretty good if they get in fast break transition basketball, and that's probably what he's most effective. We've seen some teams over the last couple of years have a player that really seems to make that leap. And if I want to give you an example, Steven Adams for Oklahoma City last year. He was a big part of why they got to where they got to. Do you see anybody on this roster that's capable of making a big leap that we saw maybe CJ make last year? Is anybody here that has a chance to really become a marquee player as compared to what they were last year? You know, I don't think that there's a singular presence on the Blazers who can make that jump that CJ did. I mean, he became one of the top 15 best scorers in the league last year. Um, that seems a little bit unrealistic for what, what's on the roster. But I do think a lot of guys can make significant progress. I think Mo Harkless has become a really solid offensive player. I don't think he's ever going to become an individual scorer, sort of one-on-one type scorer. But if he can shoot a little bit, he's so athletic, he's such a good rebounder and cutter off the ball, that he could become a really sort of valuable offensive piece. If Mason Plumlee adds even a little bit of offense, his ability to dribble and pass will, uh, will help him a lot. He can score around the rim and finishing lobs, but if he had even, you know, one other sort of go-to move in that middle area, he'd be really effective. And Alan Crabb, he, didn't, he dribbled about seven times all of last season in 90 games. If he develops, he's shown the ability, he's shown he wants to dribble in the preseason. If he really does that, he could open up his offensive game a lot because he can... He can shoot it, and if he could score in a couple of other different ways, he could take a big lead. And, and what about Myers Leonard? Because I think we remember the Memphis playoff series where he really started to find his shot and was stroking with confidence, and then he's dealt with some injuries, especially last year. I look at how well he can shoot. Can he also develop sort of that Mason Plumley handle and that dish eventually? Or where do you sort of see him fitting into this offense? Or what does he really bring to the table as far as the thing that he does best? I, I think actually remembering that uh, Memphis series is a good way to think about Myers Leonard. He was so effective in that series because he played basically straight up center against Marcus Paul, a slower footed sort of interior defensive minded center. If he matched up against two five, that's going to be a weapon because those guys don't want to lose the team. They don't want to chase Myers on certain pops and things like that. Uh, as far as developing like maybe something, I don't really see that. I think Myers Leonard's actually a better pass at it for it, but he's not a natural dribbler, and he's not a fluid playmaker. He's more of a, a smart passer, but it has to be obvious for him to make that pass. He's, he's a physically gifted passer, not just a naturally uh, inclined playmaker the way Plumlee is. You know, he's going to score the way he scores. He's a good spot-up shooter. He, you've seen him a lot this preseason trying to take sort of one dribble pull-ups from the foul line area. I think, you know, he scores by being open on the weak side and having guys his size not want to come out on him, and also just finding those little cracks in the mid-range where he can be seven feet tall and shoot on top of people. Last week, Coach Stott said the defense was still a work in progress. What are some of the key things on defense that Portland's going to have to really hone in on this season? Uh, they got to contest shots a little bit better. You know, the, the way that Stotts wants to play defense is dropping back that big man and kind of catching people in the mid-range and keeping them out of keeping them away from the rim and off the three-point line. Blazers do a really good job of chasing guys off the three-point line. They don't do a very good job of contesting people on jump shots in the mid-range. So that's both the guards sort of getting around to pick and getting back to their minute quicker, and guys like Ed Davis and Mason Plumlee stepping up and challenging those jump shots because they're going to get a ton of pick and rolls. No matter what they do, the uh, CJ and Dane are going to be put in a ton of pick and rolls, and so they're going to need help from 
guys like Mason Plumlee, Ed Davis, Myers Leonard to help them contest and sort of corral ball handlers because that, that's where they've struggled this year. It's just when, when a perimeter guy has got going, think of Devin Booker at, at that Suns game where he just went bonkers in the third quarter. Testing shots because the way their defense works, they're going to give us some jump shots. they got to make them a little bit harder. You know, Mike, based on the analytics uh, and analytics driving decisions and how teams scheme, you know, the contested mid-range shot is the shot that most teams prefer to give up as opposed to a three-point shot or a shot at the rim or a free throw. How, how do you think the Trailblazers' depth and versatility is going to allow them to continue that philosophy, but as you're saying, get better at still contesting those mid-range shots? Well, they have a lot of different shapes. I think that's going to be one of the strengths the Blazers can, can take this year. They can put in a lineup with Crab and Harkless and Amino where they can switch almost everything, uh, one through four, pretty much with, uh, with, without much hesitation. And that will allow them, the more you can switch, the more versatile sort of like size defenders you have, it makes it easier to contest those shots. Think of sort of the, you know, this is an extreme example, but the, the small lineup that the Warriors played, everyone is about the same height outside of Steph Curry, about 6'7 to 6'9, and it lets them freely switch things and so they don't give up as many open jumpers. The Blazers obviously can't replicate that, but they can get something closer and that will help them contest more shots. Mike, thank you so much for joining us. We uh, look forward to hearing more from you throughout the season. All right. Thanks a lot, Jordan.